Welcome to the Porn Free, Shame Free podcast, produced by Caleb Micah Ministries. We hope God uses this resource to help you pursue freedom found only in Jesus. Well, hey, welcome back to the Porn Free, Shame Free podcast. I'm Josh Proctor. Um, It is good to be with you uh, on this most recent episode. Um, If you've been following us recently, we've been talking a lot about what are some things inside of us that potentially leave us vulnerable to things like, you know, pornography um, temptation or, you know, pornography addiction, as well as what leaves us vulnerable to to being overwhelmed with shame in our own heart. And we're just going to continue that today um, and, and talk about one more of those things with, that could be within a person that potentially could leave them vulnerable um, to pornography or other sexual sin struggles and the shame that comes with that. And because we are a porn-free, shame-free, like that's who we are, then what we really want to emphasize is that just because there are things that might leave you vulnerable to that does not mean that God does not provide avenues for you to walk in freedom from pornography, other aspects of sexual sin, and freedom from shame. And so just a reminder that we've looked at this acronym called BLAST. We've looked at you know, boredom and loneliness and feeling angry and feeling afraid and feeling sad and feeling stressed. Um, we talked a lot about shame um, as well as just feeling tired. And so today, what we're going to look at specifically, uh, I'm going to go back and add one more A. Um, in the next podcast, we'll, we'll add another A, but this A specifically um, is ADHD. And uh, this podcast is all about ADHD and pornography. And so this is something that is near and dear to our heart. Uh, We have a lot of children. Um, If you know me personally, you obviously know that. Uh, But, you know, the the age range, eight children is, is the number that we have total. And the age range is our youngest is four, our oldest is 23. And one of our youngest children recently was diagnosed with ADHD. And as a result, we decided as a family, we wanted to do, a, you know, excuse me, as a family, as a, as a couple, my wife and I wanted to really do some research on that. What, what are things that we can do to best help our child um, on a road to success with this? And one of the things that we learned is that whereas ADHD might have a stigma, ADHD is actually a gift. And there are things that come with having that, that um, can really help a person immensely. Um, for example, um, they're really able to uh, accomplish a lot. Uh, they, you know, in terms of uh, just have a whole lot of drive, a whole lot of energy. Um, ADHD people have what I would call a hyper vigilant focus that they can really zero in on something and go after it hard. And so a lot of success stories with people in our culture who have ADHD in terms of just being able to be very successful and you know, to be people that go get things done. Another aspect of having ADHD is that um, you find yourself you know, empathetic or sympathetic because you feel things very deeply. And so that helps you to sympathize and empathize with others. But like every gift that anybody has, like you know, for example, one of my greatest gifts is my passion and my intensity, but it also comes with a weakness. Like my passion and my intensity is probably my greatest strength, but the weakness that comes with that is when my passion and my intensity takes over, you know, sometimes uh, that can be pretty damaging. For example, in the area of anger. And very thankful that the Lord's teaching me how to let the Holy Spirit control me in that. But I bring all that up to just say every gift every strength also has a weakness. And so, you know, for the, the great things that can come and the gift that comes from having ADHD, the flip side is there are some um, ramifications of having that um, that can be difficult to struggle with. But the interesting thing is how they tie in to things like pornography. Now, I won't go into all of the positives of ADHD or all the negatives of ADHD, but I'm going to focus on three ramifications that are negative if you have this, if you have this, if your spouse has this, if your you know, boyfriend or girlfriend has this, if your child has this, 
um, if a friend has this, if somebody you're discipling, pouring into has this, um, these are three negative ramifications of having ADHD as it relates to the pornography. Number one is you're prone to addiction. Um, obviously, pornography is a major addiction, and so you can be prone to addiction with ADHD. You combine the oversaturation of sex in our culture with the um, just advancements in technology that make anything accessible to us that fast, combined with having ADHD, pornography addiction can be something um, that someone who has that can fall into easily. Number two, the, a, a, rest, a thing they wrestle with is a thing called a, a, an inability to regulate emotion. Folks who have ADHD really struggle with that. And so when a person is looking at pornography as a way of escape, one of the reasons they're doing that is because they're not dealing with these negative emotions in their heart. They're not understanding how to have intimacy. And so one of the ways that a person with ADHD tends to cope is to escape. And so when you're not able to regulate those emotions, you escape into another world because that's what helps you regulate. If you escape into pornography, that's just scary, especially when that person can be prone to addiction. And then you throw on top of that that a person who has ADHD also wrestles big time with shame because they feel like something's wrong with them because they're different, because they see the world differently, they experience the world differently, and there's not anything wrong with them. It's just who they are. It's what they have inside of them. But the flip side is if you feel shame about that because you feel different than everybody else, and then maybe that shame leads you to want to escape. That shame leads you to addiction, to things like pornography. So you give in to pornography as a way to help regulate your emotion. Then you feel shame about that. So then you want to regulate the shame, and you don't know how. So how do you do that? You give in to more pornography. It's just this vicious cycle. So what does a person need who's been gifted with this thing called ADHD in a world that's saturated with pornography? saturated with sexual sin and as a result can be saturated with a lot of shame. What do they need? Well, number one, they need really good boundaries when it comes to technology. And notice I'm not going to say rules. I'm not going to say no technology, but I'm going to say strong boundaries. And the best way to do that is to have people in their life that can speak into them about what those boundaries need to look like because it may be different for every person. There, there are things you know, maybe a phone that they can't own, or maybe they can't have a laptop or an iPad, or maybe, maybe if you're watching this and you're like, dude, I have ADHD, th then maybe you don't need a smart TV. M maybe you don't need to have unlimited access to technology through your phone, through computer, through laptop, through TV. But the idea is I'm not going to tell you thou shalt do this because all that's going to result is legalism. It's going to give you rules to try to follow, which ultimately will lead to more guilt and more shame, which potentially could lead to more pornography, which potentially could lead to more shame, which would lead you in a cycle that you can't get out of. And the only one who can help you get out of that is Jesus. So who gives you those boundaries? You invite Jesus to speak into that. And if you don't know how to do that, this will be where it would be very important to have a group of people in your life, or even just one or two, that can be a sounding board that can speak into you about what those boundaries might need to look like. Another thing that you're going to need is this thing called emotional regulation. Like what do you do when you're so overwhelmed with emotion that you can't function? What you've got to have in that, in that place is some sort of escape plan so that you can help regulate emotion. Something that might help with that is having people in your life you can contact. Maybe people that you live in your home. Hey, I'm struggling right now. And they can pray for you. And they can maybe share, you know, give affection to you. Or maybe they can offer encouragement. You might need physical exercise. You know, Physical exercise is one of the greatest ways to regulate emotion. Sweating releases endorphins in the brain. And it helps your brain increase its ability to reason. Maybe that what you need is just somebody who's going to love on you or even teach you how Jesus can love on you 
in the midst of those negative emotions that you can't regulate in the moment. And then thirdly, what you really need is someone who's going to be with you in the midst of that shame. Someone who can speak into you and say, ADHD is not a curse. ADHD is a gift. And there may be weaknesses that come with the gift, but it's a gift. And someone who can speak in, maybe that's God speaking into you. Maybe that's other people in your life speaking into you, affirming you, affirming this gift. So that no, there's not something wrong. No, I don't have to be overwhelmed with this shame. This is how God made me. And it's a good thing. See, I need God and I need people in my life who can speak into that. Now, I'm going to transition right now and specifically talk to parents about how you can do this for your child if they have ADHD, especially as it relates to the world of pornography. If you go to my website, pornfreeshamefree.com, and you scroll down to the bottom of the, of the main homepage, what you're going to see is that there are a lot of stats that we post about pornography in our current culture. Our world is overwhelmed with sexual sin evil. And so what I want to be able to do for my child, or if you're watching this for your child who might wrestle with this gift they have called ADHD, but then struggles that come with it, is what do I do as far as technology with them? Well, maybe I'm limiting the amount of technology. Maybe I'm making sure they can't be exposed to pornography. Maybe I'm putting boundaries or restrictions on their devices. And maybe I'm modeling the same thing and putting those boundaries on my devices. Maybe I'm restricting what my technology use looks like, whether it be you know, at the dinner table or how much technology I'm doing during a day. Again, I'm not going to give you rules, but the idea is to model for your child that you're willing to limit your media intake, your technology intake, so you can provide the opportunity for them to limit their media intake, their technology intake, and A, they're learning how to have good discipline and balance as it relates to technology, and B, it limits their exposure to things like pornography. You say, Josh, what does this look like? Well, again, we're a faith-based um, podcast. Porn Free, Shame Free is all about that Jesus is the one that sets free. That's what we're all about. And the Bible is what we use to base that on. The Bible, as we talk about all the time, is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And there's this guy named Nehemiah in the Old Testament who was leading God's chosen nation to rebuild the wall that surrounded their capital city. And while they were doing that, and you can see this in Nehemiah chapter 4 in the Old Testament, Nehemiah chapter 4, Nehemiah is leading this group and they incur, encounter great opposition. So what Nehemiah does is he provides tools in one hand for them and he provides a sword in the other. And the, the last two things we'll talk about in this podcast are what does it look like as a parent to have those tools in that hand? But what we're talking about right now is what does it look like to have that sword? How can I protect my child appropriately from being overly saturated with technology that leaves them vulnerable to pornography and leaves them vulnerable to pornography temptation. I can tell you that um, overprotection is a problem I have in my life. I love my kids so much, sometimes I want to control too much. And if they were on this podcast, they would be going, yes, amen, yes, dad does that. A couple of ways that parents overprotect is what I would call helicopter parenting or lawnmower parenting. Helicopter parenting is I'm always hovering around my children trying to um, make sure they can be controlled and protected. And, and look, there are some things that we do need to protect our children from. We'll talk about in a minute. But always hovering around them, controlling, you know, making sure they're protected. Sometimes, you know, guys, that, that is not healthy. Protecting appropriately is healthy. Helicopter parenting is not healthy. Lawnmower parenting is another way that's not healthy. That you're basically mowing down every obstacle in the life of your child so that they don't ever encounter any obstacles themselves. Guys, if we don't know how to deal with obstacles, we can't do life. Life is filled with them. And that is a way to inappropriately protect my child in helicopter parenting or lawnmower parenting. So you say, Josh, what's appropriate? 
What's that sword? I'm not protecting my child from pain, but I'm protecting my child from evil. Pain is one of the greatest things that God uses to grow us up, to mature us, and to conform us into Him. When I control and protect my child to where they don't have to face pain, I'm actually keeping them from growing and maturing the way that they need to. But if I'm protecting my child in an appropriate manner, what I'm saying is I don't want my child to be exposed to evil. And having a good technology plan for your home, especially for a child who has ADHD, is going to be so important to protect them appropriately. The second thing they're going to really need as a parent, um, if you're a parent of a child with an ADHD, um, who, excuse me, who has ADHD, you're going to want to connect with them relationally. You're going to want to help them regulate their emotion. There's a book called The Connected Child by Karen Purvis. Karen Purvis has since passed away from this life and is now in eternity with Jesus since she committed her life to him. But Karen Purvis wrote this incredible book, The Connected Child, and it's about really about adoption and how do you care for an adopted child as a parent. But there's so many good principles in there in terms of how I want to relate to my own children. And one of those principles is not time out, but time in. And I'm thinking a lot right now about younger children. A lot of times we'll say, hey, you're going to time out right now, and then they go get sent away. But for an ADHD child who struggles with emotional regulation, sending them away to try to soothe themselves and figure it out is not helpful. In fact, it will lead them to want to escape. What they need is us to do time in with them. That as they're struggling emotionally regulating, even if they're being disrespectful, even if they're losing their temper, that we as the parents are with them, that we are caring for them. We're not giving them what they want. We're not, you know, they're throwing a fit. We're not just, okay, whatever you want, we're giving it to you. Maybe the discipline is you don't get to do what you want to do right now. You just have to sit here. But while you sit here, I'm going to sit here with you. Maybe I'm going to hug you and hold you while I'm sitting there with you. Maybe I'm going to stroke your hair while I'm sitting there with you. The idea is that we're not asking them to soothe those emotions themselves, that we are regulating the emotions for them, and then it models for them how God can help them regulate those emotions, that God wants to meet them in their stuff, that God wants to connect with them relationally. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, that he wants to dine with them. Revelation, a book in the New Testament, that Jesus wants to actually eat with them, have intimacy with them, connect with them. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 2, another book in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul wrote, writes, who, a guy who planted many churches and wrote half the New Testament, he said, we share with you not only the gospel, not only the truth about what it means to follow Jesus, we shared you us because you had become so dear to us. For the child who has ADHD, they must know that the parent cares deeply for them and wants to be with them and share life with them even if how they're acting is not what they want. Because I will confess as a parent of eight children, I have not always done that. This principle applies to all children. It especially applies to the child with ADHD. And what I'm thankful to the Lord is, is that He's growing me up in how to be with our children when they need help regulating emotionally, and in particular, this child we have who has ADHD. So we want to protect appropriately. Sword in one hand, tools in the other. What's one of those tools? Connecting relationally. But the last tool is this idea of spiritually investing. And I'm just going to focus, for the sake of time, on this idea of shame. Guess what if they knew that God wanted to be with them in their sin and in their shame? In their sin and in their shame. What if they knew that? What if your child with ADHD knew that? What if they knew in their difficult time regulating emotion that God wanted to be with them in it? What if in the fact that they felt different, they knew that God wanted to speak value over them? You know, the last podcast I did 
um, talked a lot about shame. I would encourage you to go back and re-watch that um, or watch it for the first time as a way to speak into what does it look like to meet my child in their shame. Because that ADHD child who's prone to shame and who then maybe is given into pornography and that shame is amplified, what they desperately need is spiritual investment from us. And what that spiritual investment from us looks like is like God being with them and reminding them if they follow Jesus, their identity is not in their sinful choices, but in the fact that Jesus covers us with righteousness. Oh, what it would do for the child's confidence who has ADHD. Oh, what it would do to maybe help them see, man, this really is a gift, is if we put them in a position as parents where they could not escape or limited opportunities for them to escape, especially in the world of pornography. What does that protection, not overexposure to technology plan look like? Oh, the confidence it would give them when they know even when I'm a mess, Somebody who loves me wants to be with me, connect with me relationally. This idea of spiritual investment, this idea of, hey, my parents know that God meets them in their stuff and God wants to meet me in mine. How do I know that? Because my parents are modeling that. My parents are communicating to me, no, no, this thing called ADHD, no, it's not bad. It's a gift. And I don't need to feel shame over that. I need to rejoice over what God's given me. And then I need to learn what does it mean to connect with Jesus? What does it mean for His Spirit to empower me so that I can then control and regulate those emotions and then really channel this incredible gift that He's called ADHD? Maybe you're watching this and you're like, Josh, I I don't know what it means for Jesus to meet me in my stuff. Maybe it's because you don't know Him. I'd highly encourage you in this moment to consider that even now God the Father is calling you to Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ, and that He would want you to drop to your knees, come to the end of yourself and say, I can't do life on my own. Jesus, I believe you died. I believe you rose again. I believe I can be completely forgiven because of you. And I'm going to freely surrender my life to you and receive the gift of you, Jesus. And you know what? When you do that, He meets you in your stuff. And he sees that even the things that we think might be things to be ashamed of are things that he says are good, like ADHD. And even things that we feel shame over that because of sin leads us there. He's saying, hey, I cover that sin. Maybe you're watching this and you're a parent and you're like, I want to love my child like that. Then you let God love on you first. Maybe you're watching this and you're like, I have ADHD. Josh, what do I need? Let Jesus meet you in it. See that it's a gift and how he can empower you to control those things that are hard when you have it. My hope and my prayer is this. For my child and for those of you watching who have ADHD, that you walk away saying, it's a gift. It's a gift. And like every gift, there's strengths and there's weaknesses. And on those weaknesses, oh Jesus, I need you to help. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that today what was shared would be a huge encouragement to those who have watched or listened. God, I pray in Jesus' name, by the power of your Spirit, by the power of your shed blood on that cross, God, would you speak hope to the one who has ADHD who's watching or listening? Would you speak hope to the parent of a child with ADHD who's struggling? God, would you speak hope to them? God, thank you for the freedom that we have in Jesus. We say it in your name. Amen. God's blessings to you on your journey to freedom or on your journey as you lead others to freedom.